In part one of this Luthier Tips Du Jour video on double tops, I gave a brief history of the composite or double top and talked about the benefits and materials used in this technology. I also showed how Luthier Alan Dunwell prepares the components used in the construction of the double top. In part two of this Luthier Tips Du Jour, Alan will walk us through the gluing process. As I mentioned in part one, the main benefit from the double top is weight reduction. It is therefore very important that you precisely calculate the amount of glue used in the gluing process. To glue the components together, you need a glue with a long open time and one that is thixotropic. This means that the gelatinous glue, when mixed, will become fluid as it is stirred or agitated and will return to its gelatin-like state afterwards. This allows the glue to flow and adhere to the Nomex and when in place form fillets at the joint but not flow out and away from the joint. Allen recommends using System 3 T88 for gluing the components together. This two-part epoxy forms a fillet between the Nomex, represented as red in the picture, and the top plate, represented in blue. You don't want the glue to run out onto the blue inner or outer skins, or wick into the Nomex. That's why the thixotropic qualities of this glue make it ideal for gluing the components together. You need to weigh and record everything so that you later can determine how much glue by weight you put into the top. The first glue up will be the outer skin, which is 60 thousandths thick, the solid piece, and the Nomex. So let's start by weighing these components. In our case, these components weigh 128 grams. Record this measurement. To calculate the amount of glue needed for the glue up, Allen uses graph paper with one inch squares on it. On the paper, he has different body sizes that he makes. He can then calculate how many square inches he has to cover with the glue. He needs double this because he has to glue the inner and outer skins. Allen has found that between 0.14 and 0.16 grams per square inch is about the right amount for making double tops. In our case, we need to cover about 241 square inches, which means we need between 33.7 and 38.6 grams of glue. He begins by weighing the paper he will mix the glue on and records this number. Here it is 14 grams. Through experience Alan has found that 10 5 inch lines of glue is about 35 grams. He lays out the appropriate number of 5 inch lines of glue on the paper. He then places 5 inch lines of hardener in between the glue lines. This then gets weighed and in our case the glue and paper came out to 50 grams which means we have about the right amount of glue or about 36 grams. You want to thoroughly mix the glue. For a gluing surface we would be using a flat workboard. Make sure that it is completely free of debris. There is enough flex in the top after gluing that you can get the correct radius using radius dishes when gluing on your braces. However, you may want to consider using a concave surface for more pronounced radii if doing a composite back. Allen uses an acrylic palette with the guitar outline on it to place the glue. A sticky film tape or similar product on the palette will help with cleanup later. An inexpensive brayer or ink roller that comes apart for easy cleanup is used to spread the glue. If you warm the glue bottles in hot water before mixing it, the glue will spread a little easier. Push the glue right up to the outline of your guitar and make sure that it is evenly spread across the palette. Waving a heat gun across the surface will help the glue flow out across the palette and allow it to spread evenly. Place the hard piece right side up and aligned with the center line of the palette into the glue. Peel it up and if necessary use the brayer to evenly spread the glue on it. Folks, your high-tech glue spreading device will not work here. Use your finish nail to align the piece in the correct position on the outer skin. Make sure the center lines are aligned and then remove the nail. 
Now place the Nomex right side up onto the pallet and gently press it into the glue. Use the heat gun again to help the Nomex seat well into the glue. Make sure that you thoroughly get the glue onto the Nomex. Remember that if you have a glue failure on a double top, it is virtually impossible to fix. So get good glue coverage when gluing. Very carefully remove the Nomex from the glue pallet and place it on the outer skin with as little movement as possible. Gently pull the Nomex in tight around the solid piece. At this point, it should be just a skosh taller than the actual Nomex. Also, gently press down on the Nomex. Now place a piece of wax paper over the components and place the entire workboard into a vacuum bag. After overnight glue time, remove the top from the vacuum bag. Weigh the top to determine how much glue is in it. It now weighs 145 grams, and without the glue it weighed 128 grams. So this tells us we used about 17 grams of glue. Between 12 and 20 grams is normal. At this point, the solid piece should be at about 65 thousandths, and the Nomex is at about 60 thousandths. We need to bring the hard piece down until it is flush with the Nomex. You can use a thickness sander to do this. At this point, the top is about 120 thousandths thick. After sanding, weigh the top again. It is now 144 grams. Also weigh the inner skin. It weighs 67 grams. Once again, mix up the same amount of glue as before. Be sure to weigh the paper and the glue. Then spread the glue on the pallet and use a heat gun if needed to help it spread evenly. Now place the top skin that already has the Nomex glue to it onto the glue pallet. Make sure the center line of the top is aligned with the center line on the pallet. Lightly press it into the glue to get good glue transfer. Gently peel the top off the glue pallet and then place it again back onto the pallet to make sure you get good glue transfer. Let it sit for a minute or so to allow the glue to settle and flow out. Once again, peel the top off the pallet and use the brayer to evenly spread the glue on the hard part if needed. Use the finish nail to align the pieces. Notice how the inner skin is skewed slightly off the center line, allowing for a stronger center seam. Place it gently onto the Nomex and try not to wiggle it around. Lightly press the skin to make good contact with the Nomex. Turn the top over so that if any glue flows, it will flow out of the Nomex. Place a piece of wax paper on it and then place the components into the vacuum bag. Smooth out the wrinkles in the bag as the vacuum is drawn because it is possible to actually dent the top. As the glue dries, clean up all your tools with vinegar. Cleaning the pallet is easy if you used a sticky film to cover it. Just peel the tape off and wipe it clean with vinegar. After the glue has dried, Remove the top from the vacuum bag. Congratulations, you now have a composite or double top that looks just like an ordinary top, but can be up to 25% or more lighter than a traditional top. You can now install your rosette and braces as you normally would. Keep in mind that unlike traditional top construction, once a composite top is assembled, there is little that can be done to change its acoustic properties. It kind of is what it is.